Welcome to the flipped classroom. The first question I want to ask you is what do you think about this statement? Lecturing is the time-honored most efficient method of teaching material to students. Do you agree? Yes. Disagree? No. Or I'm not really sure. I don't know. Well I'm going to show you this picture from the 13th century and you'll see that here we have the instructor up on the podium talking to a classroom that's sitting down and we see certain things that might be familiar to you like a student talking to another student and distracting him, a student gazing off into space or at another student, and of course the one who's fast asleep. And frankly I think that if we look at our current classrooms there hasn't been a lot of change when it comes to lecturing. The goal behind the flipped classroom is to engage students in active learning. Actually, it's more of a shift than a flip. In the classic classroom, prior to class, the student does homework from the previous class and reads the text for the class for the next day. Then in class, they get their first introduction to the new material. And following class, they are given homework to develop deeper understanding of the material and they're assigned to read the text for the next class. Now, we all know what gets dropped out of this process. Right, reading the text. So the shift starts with a first exposure to the basic material, usually through a video or through reading. Then in class, the students engage in active, higher level cognition exercises and after class they may do some follow-up homework but more importantly they do the pre-work for the next class. So how does flipping work? The students do the pre-work before class. Classically this has been a video, usually a video of the lecture that you would normally give in class. Or they read the text and I have my students fill out a study guide to accompany it or they could research the material and find out from themselves outside the text. Then in class, exercises are done at higher cognitive levels. These could be group learning techniques or projects. It could be lab work. It could be an instructor guided assignment. The idea is to give them the tools that they need before class, specifically those at Bloom's levels 1 and 2, remembering and understanding. These are, after all, the tools that they need to progress to higher levels of cognition. In class, they will use these tools to move up to the higher levels, specifically applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Here are the four basic rules for flipped classrooms. One, provide some form of pre-class work. Remember to keep it focused on the lower cognitive levels. Two, provide an incentive to do the pre-class work. I find that making it a significant portion of their grade is pretty good. Three, assess the understanding of the pre-class work. You want to be sure that they got the information they needed. This could be through a quiz, a study guide, discussion, or a review of the material at the first of class. Four, focus in class on higher cognitive levels. I have to emphasize that this must be done well. Otherwise, you are not getting what you need out of a flipped classroom. This portion is much more important than the pre-class work. This is not just a shift in the format of the class, but a shift from teaching to learning. From being the sage on the stage to being the guide on the side. From being teacher-centered to being student-centered. And most importantly, it's designed to make the student responsible for learning. What's good about it? Well, it does enhance student-centered learning. It allows for review of the lecture, ad lib, it encourages active learning, and it allows them to learn at higher cognitive levels, which are usually much more interesting than the basic levels. For the faculty, it allows them to explore new methods of teaching, and it emphasizes the role as a guide in active learning. It may increase pass rates. I have to tell you that the studies show variable results. There are people who are very enthusiastic and others that are not. What's bad about it? Okay, it's time consuming. For the students there is a steady flow of out-of-class work and for the teachers it requires high levels of preparation, specifically in creating the videos, in creating and grading assessments, 
and in preparing the in-class activities. I also have to let you know that the students are going to push back. They are, after all, very used to passive learning. They're not used to having to get involved in the process of learning. The greatest weakness that I have seen in flipped classrooms is class activities that cover the same material as the pre-work. This turns out to be just an attempt to move the class into the home. And it does not work at all. It changes nothing. So if you're not doing higher level activities during class, you might as well not flip your classroom. I'm going to give you some hints now. First of all, don't try it all at once. Pick one class day at first, then expand from there. Keep the videos short. Try to keep them down to 5 to 10 minute segments. And intersperse activities between video segments. Quizzes, games, anything you want in between the segments. Use the stuff from the web. There's just bunches of things out there that you can use. But use your own lectures for the video. Because this teaches what you want taught. It also builds a link to your students. They get used to your voice, to your emphasis, what you think is important. And last, plan carefully for your in-class time. And plan for more activities than you think you will need. Otherwise, you will end up with a gap in your class. So let's review. What are the four basic rules of flipped classrooms? Provide some form of pre-class work. Provide an incentive to do the pre-class work. Assess the understanding of the pre-class work. Focus in class on higher cognitive levels. Does anybody have any questions 